Okay, in this video, we are going to look into electronic circuit hacks. Now, these are circuits you normally won't see. Now, when I was in high school, I was into electronics, and back then, there was no internet, so I couldn't order parts. But there were a lot of TV repair shops, and I would go in there, and they would give me all the TVs that they couldn't repair, and I would take them home and cut out all the parts. So I had to make do with the parts that I had. So that was a little talent. It's good to have. So I still do, do that today. Now, if you look at the breadboard, you see I have a little beeper, and there's a transistor driving the beeper, so I need a clock source to drive the transistor to, to pulse the beeper. Now, the simplest uh, clock source could be a 555 timer, but there's actually a simpler one. It's a flashing LED. Now, inside this LED, there's a little flasher. You can see a little black dot there. That's the flashing circuit. So if I apply that uh, to the circuit, it'll become my clock, and it's pulsing the beeper. Now when the, when the flasher turns on, current flows through the flasher. It also flows through the transistor. It's getting its ground through the base emitter junction, which is turning on the transistor and activating the beeper. And we could actually use a relay instead of the beeper. We could substitute a relay instead of the beeper uh, for the same circuit. Okay, I have removed the beeper from the circuit and replaced it with a 5 volt relay and a freewheeling diode. So now when I apply my clock, my flashing LED, we could uh, turn the relay off and on. So I'll apply the clock to the circuit. And you can hear the relay clicking off and on. So now we have a set of contacts where we could drive heavier loads. Now if I remo remove the transistor from the circuit and apply a normal LED in series with the flashing LED, it will turn on the normal LED off and on in sequence with the flashing LED. So instead of turning on a normal LED, like you can see here, we could turn on the LED inside an optocoupler. Okay, I removed the normal LED that was in series with the flashing LED and replaced it with a general purpose optocoupler, which you can see on my breadboard. So now we have an isolated circuit. So now the flashing LED is turning on the LED inside the optocoupler which is energizing the output of the optocoupler. So if I go on the emitter of the optocoupler, you can see it's in phase with the flashing LED. Now if I put a pull-up resistor on the collector of the optocoupler, we'll get an output that's out of phase uh, from the LED, flashing LED. So now we have a clock circuit that we can feed in, into some logic. And if we apply 3.3 uh, volts to the VCC of the optocoupler, we'll have a 3.3 volt output. If we apply 5 volts, we'll have a 5 volt output. Or we could apply 10 volts, we'll get a 10 volt output for CMOS logic. So this is a, a, a very versatile clocking circuit for any type of logic families. Okay, next, we are going to have a look at temperature sensing. Now, if you don't have a temperature sensor on hand, you could use a simple diode. This is a switching diode, either a 1N4148 or a 1N914. So I have a little demo circuit that will detect the heat of my finger. So if I apply my finger to the sensor, you can see it turns on the LED. It's triggering the LED just by the heat of my finger. So it's kind of like a little touch switch. Even though there's other ICs out there, they'll do a better job for touch switching. Now I'm using a diode as a temperature sensor in this circuit. So normally we associate a diode to rectify an AC signal into a DC voltage. But in this case, I'm using a diode to detect temperature change. Okay, next we're going to have a look at light detection. Now if you don't have a light detector like an LDR or a phototransistor, you could use a simple LED like this one here for light detection. Okay, here's my light detection circuit which uses LEDs as a light sensor. Now the heart of the circuit is an op amp which you can see here. It's a CA3140 and it's configured as a voltage comparator. This is my output LED now this output LED comes on when the light sensor is triggered. Now I have two banks of LEDs, the top bank of three LEDs and a bottom bank of three LEDs. Now the top bank of three LEDs monitors the ambient light of the room and auto calibrates the circuit. And the bottom three LEDs is my trigger LEDs. So if I cover them up, you can see it triggers my circuit and my output LED comes on. Now if I change the light conditions of the room, the top three LEDs will compensate and the circuit will still work. So if I would cover them both up, see it doesn't come on because it doesn't see a change. 
has to see a change, a difference between the two LEDs, the two banks. So just by covering up the bottom bank, I can trigger the circuit and my output LED comes on. Okay, next, we are going to have a look at voltage regulators. So I have a 7805 voltage regulator on my breadboard. It's a 5 volt regulator. I got about 9 volts on the input. That's pin 1 on the very left. And pin 3 on the very right is the output. It's fed into my meter and I'm getting 5.043 volts on the output. Now if we want to increase the output of this voltage regulator, all we have to do is remove the jumper from the center pin to ground, that's our ground connection, and replace it with a diode. And we could increase the output of our voltage regulator by 0.6 volts. Okay, I added a diode from the center connection, that's my ground pin, to ground. So we're raising the ground reference now up 0.6 volts. So my output now is 5.685 volts, so we increase our output of our regulator by 0.6 volts. Now we could add another diode in series, we could have two in series, and even increase it more. Okay, I have added two diodes to my ground pin. So now our ground reference is raised by two diode drops, so it's 1.2 volts. So we're getting an output voltage of 6.338 volts on our voltage regulator. We could add another diode to bring it up even higher, but we don't want to go uh, too high with adding more diodes, or else we'll lose our regulation. So for a better regulation, we could use a TL431, that's a programmable Zener diode, and we could use that to bring our voltage output to 9 volts with a 14 volt input, as seen in the schematic diagram. Okay, our last circuit will be a power switching circuit and it will be an AC load that we have here, so my load will be this resistor and we have AC power connected to the circuit 15 volts so we want to switch it, now normally when we want to switch an AC power circuit we use a, a triac but if you don't have a triac you could actually use two MOSFETs, so I have two end channel MOSFETs, you see my breadboard and they're connected back to back and by, by giving it a, a gate to source voltage, a DC voltage, we could activate the load, we could actually feed power to the load. So I have my meter across the load, it's set for AC volts. Now I want to apply a gate to source voltage, 9 volts, to, to the circuit. She'll switch, and there's our 14 volts AC, and I, re I release the gate to source voltage, and she goes back to zero, and she shuts off. So there's an example where we could use MOSFETs instead of a triac for AC switching. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard for switching AC loads using MOSFETs. And the two MOSFETs that I'm using are the IRF Z44N, they're in channel MOSFETs, you can see them here. The source pins are connected together, and we're connecting our AC power across these two terminals, it's 15 volts AC, and our load is a load resistor of 470 ohms. Now when we apply a gate to source voltage by closing the switch, we're going to apply 9 volts to the gate to source of both MOSFETs and then we'll activate them. So in the positive half cycle we're going to get current flowing through the load through the first uh, MOSFET. When it comes to the second MOSFET it's not on but the current is going to go through the body diode back down to the source. So that's our complete circuit for the half cycle. Now in the negative half cycle it's going to go through the bottom MOSFET. When it comes to the top MOSFET it's, uh, it's not going to be on so it's going to go through the body diode through the load back to the source and that's going to be our our negative uh, path. So that's how we get our positive negative path flowing through the, uh, the circuit to activate our load when we activate it with 9 volts. So those are my, uh, my hack circuits and maybe it's not for everybody but maybe it will trigger some ideas how to do more with less.